Welcome back to the US Bridge Championship. We've reached the last eight, at which stage the two seeded teams come in. That's why we're able to enjoy what's a Monday afternoon here in England, watching the great uh, Rodwell and Mextroff. Let's see how they do. Normally, I think I'm being served short measure if I have to watch a one no trump contract, but I'll forgive them in the present circumstances, seeing as it's such an important event with uh, big stars in all four seats. Mixroth is not particularly worried if they keep on uh, plugging away at the club suit. At least that will allow him to score a trick with Dunn is king of clubs. So he started to set up the Diamonds, where he's missing the three top cards anyway, not giving away any tricks by uh, setting up that suit. He started life with uh, five tricks. If he can score the king of clubs and an extra diamond, that will bring him up to seven, and maybe he can make a spade as well. You see how it works well to play on diamonds, the suit where he's missing top cards. He can develop it uh, without giving up any tricks in the process because those three diamonds were losers anyway. So that's a comfortable part score with no one needing to uh, worry about any imps changing hands. He made Hello, certain tricks David. I Hi, Peter. You drawn to the honeypot where Mextroth and Rodwell are showing us their uh, skills? Yes, I was sent here by Jana to help you. I know you didn't need help, but still. And now we are joined by Sylvan also. Uh, hello there. I hope you you can hear me. Hi. Nearly all the pairs in this event will be playing five card majors, and that's why they can't open a spade on uh, Ace King 10x. Absolutely standard in most of the world, except for here in Britain, where people tend to lag behind the times. Many of them playing classic Akol from several decades back. We know Trump and four card majors. The rest of the world thinks that's a pretty duff idea. I mentioned on the first board that I didn't mind one one no trump contract, seeing as we were watching such illustrious players, but two is sort of uh, taking my tolerance to the almost a breaking point, expecting something a bit juicier when we come to board three. Last night I saw one of the worst one no trump opening up for a long time. It was a 15 count with king six and a half. And uh, the result was that. Um, the pair ended up in 2-0, while well, they were playing four hearts, making five at the other table. Well, there's absolutely no need to protect the guilty, Peter. So who was the player who hadn't won no trump on that? I'm almost sure it was um, Joel Woodridge. Right, well, let me know if you got an email from his lawyer, because it was someone else. Perhaps you were surprised to see uh, West leave a spade against one no trump, if you think that all, you've read so many books saying leave the fourth best of your longest and strongest. But every time you lead away from a suit containing uh, an honor or two at the top, you're likely to give away about half a trick on average. That may be worthwhile if you're leading from a five card suit, because you've got some chance of setting up a lot of long cards. It's not nearly so worthwhile when you're leading from a four-card suit, and that's why Lev decided he would lead a spade rather than lead a heart or a club. So regardless of what would have worked well on this particular hand, the spade uh, surely is the best lead if you just look at those 13 cards there. If you look at Declarer's heart holding, three low opposite Queen 10x, if he has to develop the suit himself, leading to the 10 on the first round, We'll give an extra trick when West's holding is headed by King Jack or Ace Jack. That's two chances. Leading to the Queen on the first round would work only when West had the Ace and King. So in rough terms, it's twice as good to uh, lead to the 10. If West had led the Eight of Spades, it would have been entirely obvious to Mextroth that the Queen and Jack were both on site. So after winning one honor, 
with the ace, he would be sure of a finesse of the 10 on the next round. Wasn't quite so clear when the 6 was led because that could have been from a longer suit, but he finessed the 10 anyway and ended up with 8 tricks. Right, well, that's enough of one no trump contracts for uh, at least half an hour. Very often one no trump contracts don't make swings, but still one no trump can be a very interesting contract, especially if the high card points are closely to even divided. So I know a saying, never let a good player play one no. No, that's particularly good advice at match point pairs, Peter, isn't it? Because uh a declarer in one no trump very often scores well at match points, and that's not if he happens to make the contract. Even going 50 or 100 off may be a good board if the opponents could have made, uh, say, two hearts or two spades. A normal lead, but still the very best lead. Yeah, and I guess we just all noted that uh, technical play of the Queen of Spades uh, that you should do in that particular case. Uh, there are two reasons for playing the Queen of Spades. If partner has the king, it doesn't matter whatever you play. But if partner don't have the king, then playing the queen will force very often the clear to take the king, even in situations where your partner don't have any entries. There's more reason to make that play in defense when you hold a lot of high cards outside and you're likely to gain the entry uh, later on in the defense. Otherwise, if you play the ace and return uh, the queen, declare can hold up the king, win the third round, and then when you get in, you've got no spade to play. By playing the queen on the first round, declare can't possibly hold up the king because for all he knows, the guy on lead was leading from ace-jack and he would uh, never make a spade trick. It's a little bit risky it can be because your partner will probably assume that you don't have the ace when you play the queen, but when you're in control with the stronger hand it works okay. And very often uh, players on this level played uh, sort of uh, uh, delayed signals for the, for the first suit, uh, Smith, Peter, so he can tell when the clouds start playing about he liked the spades or didn't like the spades. Now, we're looking for some way that they can avoid playing in one no trump here. Be a big cheer from me if they can do it. Three running, wow. Yeah, I was actually going, going to ask you uh, if he's going to open one no trump 14-16 uh, here with that shape. I, I, I personally, I mean, uh, of course, I'm just an average player compared to what, what, what of course, I, I will never compare, but I, I am not sure I like this bit here. I'm not sure about it. Even if I understand there is a problem of uh, rebeat, of course, if you hear uh, one club, one spade, uh, you, you have nothing clear, but still. They're probably playing a strong club system and can't open a club. According to their card, what will the next one play reverse Smith? But both played high low in clubs. That surprised me. I understand that le sorry, it's a uh, left caller. Back. Well, I'd better explain to the uh, kibitzers what Smith pieces are. It's a type of signaling, very unusual type of signaling, which is widely played at expert level. But when declarer plays on his own long suit in no trumps, both defenders can play high-low in that suit when they don't need to show count to indicate whether they like or dislike the suit that's been led by their side. So if the guy playing in the third seat at trick one has something particularly good in that suit, he may make a Smith Peter to say, I really like the suit you've led, carry on playing it. And if the opener has led from a relatively bad suit or knows that there's no future in it after the cards that fell at trick one, he can play high-low in Declarer's main suit to say, don't carry on with my suit. I've got another suit where the prospects may be better. So that's a, a brilliant type of signal, really, although quite difficult to play. 
and it was invented by Jeffrey, Jeffrey Smith, who uh, is a retired schoolmaster from Winchester College, one of England's most expensive uh, private schools, which are known here as public schools for historical reasons, who I used to play in his bridge team sort of 30 years ago, and he invented the method. Okay, so here they are on the way to Trino Trump, so Trino Trump was some kind of relay uh, with good hand, and I suspect uh, Corla decided not to uh, be too hard, because his hand is not just good enough for that, and, uh, okay, well, I am surprised with the end of the auction, uh, even though I get East was afraid about the club, uh, the club street, so it's why he decided not to be Trino Trump, uh, I can understand that. In general, when you're considering coming into the bidding against a strong no trump, which is something that you would contemplate quite frequently at match points for the reason that Peter mentioned, you want to shunt the expert declarer or your rival out of one no trump because he's likely to get a good board there. It's fairly safe against a strong no trump to come in with a shapely hand, even if you're fairly weak, because your partner's not likely to visualize a possible game once there's a strong no trump opening. Strange as it may seem, it's much more awkward to come in against a weak no trump. You can't really start overcalling on eight counts against a weak no trump, because if your partner has 13-14, he may be very interested in uh, the possibility of a game. Game is much more likely when uh, that someone's opened on a 12 count than if they've opened on a, a hand of at least 15. So here we see the problem that uh, if you come in on shape, which East has done, how seriously should West take that? Should he uh, start looking for game or not? And uh, if you play that really these these shapely bids coming in are something like 9 to 14, then 11 points is not really enough to start looking for a game, even if you are imagining that there might be several diamond tricks in three no trumps. Actually seems with the king of spades on side against the odds that you could make six diamonds because they come in three spades and uh, the hearts and the clubs have stopped so in fact three no trumps would have been quite a fair spot the way the cards lie. But just to change the two kings in the major suit, give south the king of hearts and north the king of spades and um, then north south will probably make three no before the clear. Al Hollander just sent me that link to the Smith Peter because I foolishly left a blank out in front of it. You can't actually click on it. But if you cut and paste the bit beginning with HTTP into your browser, then you could if you want to start uh, reading about it. I believe I'm right in saying that Bobby Wolf uh, regards it as a, a form of signaling which is likely to lead to uh, ethical problems when players start thinking whether they should give a Smith Peter or not. They sort of pass quite an accurate message to their partner that they don't have uh, a very clear-cut decision to make whether they should say they like the opening lead or not, and uh, he was a bit worried that, that uh, about signaling methods that lend themselves to that interpretation. And at this point, I very much disagree with Hammond. I have played Miss Peter now for 10, 15 years, and I think that almost every time it's very easy to decide if you will make a common or negative signal. Anyway, the point I was trying to get across, well, although three no trumps may be making here, Peter's already explained that if the cards were placed in a different way it could go miles off and my general point was that you shouldn't be uh, too ambitious when responding to intervention over a strong no trump. You know, West was pretty ambitious. It was fair enough with King to three and Palmer's diamond seed I suppose but I mean in general um, they were risking getting too high when the purpose of the intervention might possibly be just to uh, shunt declare out of one no trump. Do you know, um, Peter, what uh, general methods East-West are playing? Uh, yes, they are playing five-card major, 
201 Game Force, one no time 14 to 17, and uh, two diamonds, beat over one no, show diamond plus a major against a strong no trump, and this multi against a weak no trump. Right, now, this jump rebid in uh, classical bidding is forcing to game, and therefore it's a pretty rare bid, particularly when experts are at the table. Sometimes when uh, people haven't been playing too long and it goes a heart a spade, they're worried about rebidding just two clubs on a 17 count. This I'm speaking about new players, novices now, and they jump to uh, the three level to show they've got five points more than the minimum opening bid. Well, that's completely unsound because the bidding is forcing to game. But here, Lev has jumped to two spades just on a 17 points, and that's because he has a really great fit for diamonds there. So if partner's just got a good diamond suit, he can visualize making a slam. Say partner's got ace, queen to five diamonds and nothing else. There might be a grand slam on. You could make five diamonds, six clubs perhaps, the ace of spades, and a heart rough, something like that. So he has an absolutely massive hand in support of diamonds if partner has five of them. Well, East certainly didn't hold back when he jumped to five spades over four diamonds. So, uh, how would you um, uh, think about um, the jump to five spades? Um, how would you uh, describe that? Could it be partner? I uh, have slam values, but no cubits. Well, presumably that is what he thought, that he was too good to sign off in four spades, but he didn't have anything else he could cupid. But I mean, even that evaluation was quite a forward one, and that is why Lev made a grand slam try of six hearts on his void, because he was thinking maybe that partner might have the king-queen of spades and uh, the ace of diamonds for such a bid. So I think uh, Peter's right on uh, what five spades means, but it still was quite an adventurous bid bearing in mind that his heart honours were might well be worth very little. You see, West has already indicated heart shortage. He opens the club, rebids two spades, and then bids four diamonds. That's uh, already beginning to suggest that he hasn't got too much in hearts, too many cards in hearts. Yeah, well, uh, I suspect that sometimes uh, that two spade uh, will come from a five club, four spade, and two two, and very strong hand. So still, uh, there is some problem in heart. So uh, I'm not sure there is a lot of choice for the five spade for the five spade bid because still West is unlimited, so he, he can't really bid just two spade, uh, four spade that is. Uh, I, I don't. Well, I don't think five spades would be an automatic choice for a lot of people. I mean, he has already found a response. The singleton club is not usually an advantage to have a singleton in partner's main suit where you'll be uh, looking for tricks. So, I don't know. I, I think five spades was quite an ambitious call, and that sort of is backed up by the fact that his partner then started looking for a grand slam. Particularly, as you point out, it is possible that the hearts aren't controlled. If, if four diamonds is a more of a cubid with spades agreed, rather than uh, attempting to show why he was worth two spades and showing that he's got secondary diamond support, then in that case there might not be a hard control and that east hand is not very special in that case. I mean, say he bid four spades, uh, West wouldn't have passed that, would he? Don't think so. No, but the five spades for sure tells partner, I have no hard control. Well, so does four spades. But he felt he was a little bit too good for four spades, and we have to agree that left have um, closed the minimum for his jump to two spades. Anyway, whatever we make of the bidding, that's a good board for East-West to have bid and made six spades on those values. It was a fair enough slam, really. I mean, it was not quite as good as one of two finesses because suits might have broken badly, but very reasonable slam to bid, and uh, they're very happy when they make it, so well done. It's partly a raised memory of those three back-to-back -back one, no Trump contracts, which is always a good thing. 
and east open here with two diamond, which is the multi, showing um, a weak five to ten hand with a six card in major, two hearts and two spades for east west showed major and a minor. As you see, there are four losers off the top if they get to four spades, three diamonds and one club. So that reminds us that you need a pretty good hand to uh, bid game facing a week two. But I expect we you can perhaps expect that Lev will head for game on that hand, hoping for the best in the minors. Yeah, four clubs, that will probably be asking partner to identify his suit, and East may well respond with a transfer of four hearts, so the stronger hand can now play in four spades. Well, I expected him to do that. He's just pretty unlucky, really, that uh, there are four losers, I suppose. Unlucky or unlucky? Um, I would a bit, bit too no. Ask for partners' strengths, and, and if partners show minimum, I would sign off in three in partners' major. So, two diamonds, two no. Three hearts, in this case from my partner, showing um, minimum and spade. Uh, it's not going to happen, but we can all see that there is some little play for the for, uh, for Declaro if the lead is, is, is a heart. I mean, uh, you can just set up a heart. Uh, it will not happen, and uh, even I am not sure, even if you lead a heart, that you will find a play. But I just want to see that. I am a little bit surprised that uh, Rockwell chose to leave a heart because he know the West have both majors. Well, he doesn't need to hold more than three, does he, in uh, one of the majors? Depends how strong he is. Well, I'm not sure he can manage it, but I mean, his idea now is to set up a heart trick to ditch one of the diamonds. So he has the option of leading the jack to pin the ten. Jack, queen, rough, the ten comes down, and now the nine is good. But he needs entries to the west hand to do that. As I can see, just work. Pay this now. Jack of heart, queen of heart off. Um, then the spade to the eight. Nine of heart discarding a diamond and just playing clubs from his hand. Yes, and he can rough one club in the dummy with his last trump. Actually, in his hand. You can see it's partly a question of luck, but I mean, it, it has worked out very well that they played it from the west hand, from the strong hand, because if the opening bid had been two spades raids to four, Mextroth would have an easy uh, top diamond lead and they could cash three rounds of diamonds and the ace of clubs with no problem. Even if, uh, say, a club was led and the diamond honors were placed the other way round, still be fairly easy when it went king ace of clubs for the defenders to see with those hearts in the dummy that the best shot was to cash three diamond tricks. So that is likely to be a good board because Rodwell did not have an easy lead in either of the minors. He knew he was leading into the strong hand and as far as the side suit leads went, leading from queen fifth was uh, slightly safer than leading from the three cards to an honor because it was likely that one or other of the, the declarer hands would be short in heart, so he's less likely to give away uh, an, an honor trick by leading from a five card suit. But I can very much recommend that if you play a multi two diamonds, that you then have a system where you can be almost sure that the strong hand will be declare if you go for game.
Peter did in fact invent a wonderful system of responses to two diamonds, which we've often discussed on BBO. I don't know if you can give the kibitzers uh, any reference, any inter internet link to your system, Peter, because it certainly is very good. Thank you, David. No, I don't have a, uh, a link uh, to an English version, but I can very shortly um, tell, because these four hearts will not create many problems for the player. Um, the basic is that over two no trump, if you have minimum, you bid the suit below. So two no, three heart, shows minimum and spade. Two no, three diamond, show minimum and hearts. And two no, three clubs, just tell first, partner, I have maximum. Then the two no trump bidder over three club bid three diamond. And that three diamond ask the two diamond over to bid um, uh, the opposite major. So over three diamonds asking, three spades your hearts and three hearts your spades. So you are absolutely sure that the strong hand will be declared. And um, that will very often gain a trick. Many players would have uh, raised the spades on the north hand, but I have heard on BBO sessions that Rodball uh, and Mextroth don't like raising on three card support. In any case, he gets the chance to bid it now, and by following this sequence, he shows a stronger hand perhaps than an initial raise to uh, two spades would have done, and then also very nicely shows his 3 5 4 1 shape. And here, Rodwell in north have almost maximum for his one heart opening. Remember that North South play a strong club system where one club is 16 plus. So 14 very good high cards plus a singleton is absolutely maximum uh, for him. I was mentioning yesterday, commentating with uh, Roland Valt how very good low doubleton leads are against suit contracts. That's one of the things we found recently spending two years doing computer simulation of opening leads. Really, doubleton leads people have been pretty sniffy about them for decades. And the purpose of leading from too low is not because you're going to, you think you'll get a rough. That doesn't happen very often. The purpose of it is because you may well be leading towards partner's honors. Look here, partner's got king, queen to four. You lead towards them through the ace, and you can uh, set up some diamond tricks. That's exactly what you do when you're declarer. If you've got too low in your hand, you lead towards dummies king, queen to four, towards dummies king, jack to four, or queen, jack to four. So leading from two low cards is a very good lead indeed against suit contracts. But when your top turn is in, the, in uh, the opponent's secondary suit, I'm not so sure. On the six spade hand that we saw, they have reached six clubs at the other table, I'm told. And that has a trump loser, as well as a spade loser, it seems. So that looks like a big swing away on board five. And in a moment we will see how East-West in the closed room could miss their 4-4 four, four fit in spades and choose to play in their 6-1 fit instead of that. In the closed room, we have nickel cats as east-west playing uh, blue buck um, Mahaffey as south-north. North.
Well, six clubs did go down as it was bound to with the bad club break and the King of Spades offside. So that's 14 inches away. That's the reward to Lev and Kola for playing in uh, Spades, where you could possibly escape a bad club break, but might, I can't quite recall, you might have been uh, in trouble if the spades had broken badly, so there's uh, some sort of luck factor in deals like that. Although, having said that, six clubs was only a 6-1 fit, wasn't it? Yes, and they started up uh, quite reasonable. One club, one spade, and now three hearts by West. Um, alerted. So it's probably a sort of strong splinter. So you know from East, for club, for diamond, for heart, for no, five hearts, five spades from East. And now, I don't know where he got it from, West bit six clubs, passed out. Well, that just sounds as if he's offering an alternative contract, doesn't it? I mean, they know there's a spade fit already once he makes that jump splinter bit, and he's saying, what do you think, which will be better, clubs or spades? don't know why, I mean, if that's what it does mean, then uh, maybe East uh, shouldn't be inclined to pass it with only one club, I don't know, but, uh, you know, obviously they know what they're doing, and we're just guessing. Here, um, a lot of pairs play transfers over a takeout double, so Mextroth's heart is just like an ordinary bid uh, in spades. So the advantage of a transfer is, say, if West had passed, North could bid a spade, and you could play there, whereas normally a diamond double a spade would be forcing and the bidding could go higher. And you get all the advantages of transfer bids in other sequences. You can show your spades and then make some other bid on the next round because you're going to get another bid. So West's three hearts was just a natural response in hearts to the takeout double. He didn't have quite enough to bid game. And uh, East had a minimum double and thought that he'd done enough and passed. And what do we have here? There are two spade losers, and a diamond loser, and a club loser, for nine tricks. And again, we see the importance of leading towards honours. If you look in the spade suit, you've got to lead towards the queen-jack. The queen will force the king, and then you must lead again towards the jack-x, and this time the ace is on side, so you can establish one spade trick. If instead you made the uh, mistake of leading the queen from the west hand, south would win with the ace, and uh, now you couldn't establish a trick for the jack. So it looks like he's uh, eliminated the clubs and exited in diamonds, forcing the uh, defenders to open the spade suit, in which case he was guaranteed a spade suit, even if the ace-king were lying in the north hand over the queen-jack. Even if south could win the diamond, play a spade through to the queen and king, north would then be end-played, forced to play another spade to declare his advantage or to give a rough and slough. Uh, here on four spade bid, uh, that will probably happen. Uh, West got an awkward, uh, has an awkward decision to make. Uh, it's not clear, at least for me, it's not. And here we see what I have learned is very normal in US that you open one diamond with four four on the minus. I absolutely prefer to open one club with four four on the minus. To overcall four spades when you're vulnerable can show a really strong hand because it's not necessarily safe to uh, start with a takeout double. So if Rodwell held those two aces along with some sort of spade support, maybe uh, another sort of queen somewhere like that, he would be fully entitled to think that there might be a slam on. Obviously here he's only got one spade and his best suit diamonds has already been opened against him so it would be unthinkable to bid again. But a four spades is not an out-and-out -out preempt when bid by someone vulnerable. It does show that he's probably got, say, uh, something like eight tricks in his own hand. And if you've got a possible source of tricks 
in your hand, you should, uh, you're entitled to think about bidding a slam. But always, when you've got an opening bid against you, you've got to be fairly sure before you start heading towards trying to make a slam, because the guy who's opened the bidding is likely to have some aces and kings in his hand. And there's often you can say to yourself, oh, partner's not likely to be maximum, because uh, they've opened the bidding against us. Okay, uh, so the second swing uh, just came with uh, board six. Uh, it was played, first played was played by uh, West. Uh, east, sorry. And so the case of diamond was lead and uh, it was down one. I'm just wondering, uh, Peter and David, if you know why uh, Nickel decided not to bid, uh, not to open the bidding. Uh, I am surprised I don't play any weak two in spades here. Well, I mean, I just regard it as unbelievable that nobody would open some form of weak two on that. that is, I know that uh, Americans play weak twos much, much stronger than we do in uh, in England, certainly, and he was vulnerable, but King, Queen, Jack, 10 to 6, you've got uh, five certain tricks and you're taking away a lot of bidding, you've got no defense, everything screams out that you should make a preemptive bid on that. And here in England, a lot of people, if it was non-vulnerable, they would open three spades on that hand. So I'm just as surprised as uh, you are, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you just, uh, you will see that hand, uh, the kind of hand you will see in the book, uh, speaking about week two in spades, I mean, you have just everything for it, uh, single and heart and King, Queen, Jack, 10, 6 times in spades, so. Tell me, David, what's your uh, style with 4-4 four, four and the minus? Do you open a diamond or a club? Um, uh, ask why I prefer one club. I can tell it because, um, ah, probably it's because I am an uh, old Ackle style. So open with a low of two four card suits, uh, straight out. The other thing is that um, after one club pass, uh, your diamond fit will never be, uh, go away. And here we see that the club fit um, was well missed by East West. Not that they have used to fit the five clubs, but they still missed the ten card fit. Well, I, I've always opened the club and I've always sort of dismissed diamond openings as being something which is just happens to be taught to beginners in America, but I think I've uh, been overstating the case for one club openings for a long time because, first of all, in, uh, when you play a five card major system, unlike in ACOL, to open one club doesn't promise a four card suit, whereas for players who are willing to always open weak balanced hands a club, one diamond does at least show a suit, so that is one good reason for opening a diamond on 4-4. Four, four. The other one is that maybe as a result of them opening a diamond on 4-4, four, four, when, when there is an opening of a club, they will not respond one diamond with uh, four diamonds and a four card major. They skip the diamonds anyway and bid the major. So it's not true for us to say, oh, open a club and if there's a diamond fit partner, we'll bid them. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not true. So I can see that it is a more balanced argument than I've uh, thought for the last few years. But I can tell you that East West opened on three card club and three club diamond. So the diamond opening don't be a four-card suit. Right. Well, that does change it a bit. However, I think that uh, everyone is taught to open a diamond on that shape initially, and they don't see any good uh, reason to change it. And every time you or I say it's better to open a club, they quote some sort of negative double auction where you open a diamond and find you've got no bid unless you can rebid clubs on the next round. But I don't like opening a diamond and rebidding two clubs on 4-4 four, four anyway, even if it is a negative double one. Yeah, I'm getting a private comment already coming in saying, saying it gives you a rebid when you open a diamond and partner makes a negative double well. Yeah, it's obviously a close decision and you wouldn't find sort of people playing for their lives in the US Bridge Championship opening a diamond if it was a silly system to use. You see there that even though trumps were 2-2, that third round of diamonds promoted a trump trick for the defenders. However, on the trick that, uh, where the promotion was taken, Mexroth was able to throw his club loser away. So although he then lost a trump trick, he uh, didn't lose the second club trick, which the defenders could have prevented by uh, pre stopping a, a rough. So that was quite a good exchange. 22 high cut points. Well... This is, I wonder if East has a conventional response to show a solid suit, which would lead to a grand slam being reached in record quick time. Some players use three no trumps to show a solid suit somewhere. He's just made a positive in hearts. Well, 
this is the sort of hand that you say, that, well, it's absolutely ridiculous if they can't bid a Grand Slam, but if you see it in some club pairs, you would find you didn't have to bid seven no trumps to get a good score. You'd get a pretty good score for bidding seven hearts, because slam bidding is really difficult, particularly you know, for players who aren't big stars like this, uh, the people we're watching at the moment. And you can, slam auctions can always go wrong, and if you bid any Grand Slam in some club pairs, you're going to get a good score. So let's see now, what can East do? I mean, uh, it's not that easy to bid facing two no trumps, is it? You can just bid a forcing three hearts and see what happens. Another bid could be five hearts. Telling partner, I have control with the hearts. Look how many tricks do I have in the side suits. Right, uh, well, I'm just waiting for Peter to tell me what four clubs means. It's a bit mysterious, isn't it? You see, I only have the ACBL card that gives very, not as many information as the um, World Bridge Federation card. And for sure, this four club is not described here. Well, I'm having people tell me that it's Gerber, and that's what the operator has said. But <laughs> it'd be a pretty fatuous Gerber bid with three losing doubletons, wouldn't it? I suppose it's not so bad if you're facing a two club owner. Maybe he just wants to tell partner. Well, I don't know. It doesn't seem right that he should be taking control. It seems like he should be trying to show a solid heart to you and allowing a partner to add on the number of winners he has. How can you take control when your partner's open two clubs? Anyway, if the view graph operator has told us Gerber, then, well, I didn't really expect players to be using Gerber at this level. The contact is okay, but uh, the way to build it, I can't explain. You see, West is now saying he doesn't know what four clubs meant, and has thought it might be a singleton club, a self-agreeing splinter, because East could just bid three clubs if he had hearts and clubs. So when he jumps to four clubs, it must mean he's got a massive heart suit and a uh, singleton club. But in that case, four diamonds would just be a cubid. And as Peter says, it looks, I mean, it's, we mustn't criticize the bidding if we don't quite understand it, but on the face of it, it's just a uh, jump and hope seven hearts. How does he know that, uh, that there's not an ace missing, for example? In match points, I mean, West would definitely bid seven no trumps over seven hearts. His partner must have a huge heart suit to, bid, to jump to seven hearts, and he's looking, he can add seven top tricks. So, it's, I mean, it doesn't matter at imps particularly as far as the extra ten points is concerned, but now and again, just occasionally, you might suffer a rough if uh, North had a void. Who knows? And uh, it would be safer to play in no trumps as well as giving you a top score at match points. We are now overtaking the closed room with three to four, uh, four bots. Right. Well, that double is showing um, any four or five spades. In the original version of the negative double, one spade would show five, and the double would tend to show four. So if you play that the double can show uh, either four or five, that means that you bid one spade artificially to show uh, length in the, in the minor suits. West may now double to show that he's got three card spade support. There it goes, the support double. Partners indicated spades, and West says he's got a hand of any strength. He can show that later, and he's just showing the three card spade support so they can decide whether they had eight trumps or not. And as we can see, there are only nine tricks for East-West. I don't think there are any lead which could give the clear the tenth trick. North has to judge if he should bid three hearts just to take away some more space. His partner hasn't made a strong bid. He could have bid two diamonds to show a sound raise to the two level. So two hearts is the weakest bid available and um, doesn't show any more, really, than the King Jack X. Maybe if he had another queen, he probably would still bid two hearts. But when you've got six hearts and you expect to be in a 6-3 fit, often you would go to the three level, and it seems that he's thinking about it, and no, he's passed. Well, that's fair enough. He's vulnerable against not 
not a very special hand. We can see you, he would go one down in three hearts when he lose two spades, two diamonds, and one club, even with the finesse right, even with the trumps being good. So obviously right to pass. But it has been interesting to see if not with three hearts, how Eastwood uh, developed his hand. Over three heart, East has three possible bits. He could bit three spades, he could bit four spades, and he could double. I know here most pairs over three heart by North, the three spades is sign off, only fighting for the pass score. Four spades is obvious. And double, you show a hand with invite for four spades. I don't think East has the values for that. A first count, he have 11 high card points. It take less queen of heart away. So he only have nine high card left. And his distribution is, is as poor as the 10, 5, 4, 2, 2. What is he meant to do then if he has only four spades but 12 or 13 points? You, you, that seems to be allocating three different bids to show five card spades, doesn't it? You're very right, David. Um, my analyze was out of, he have shown his five card suit, but he hasn't. So the double can't be used here. But very often if you are in competitive bidding, let's say one spade, two hearts, two spades, three hearts. Now you have these three bits available. Yes, then it's a very good method because, as you say, you may want to compete. If you bid three spades over three hearts, you know, that might cover hands where you wanted to invite game and other ones where you just wanted to compete. So that would be a very good method then. And for sure it's not invented by me. I've been told that for decades. Anyway, four spades is not particularly a bad bid. I mean, uh, you can't judge these positions completely. And uh, basically, it needed the queen of clubs on side and maybe a decent diamond break. I mean, you just have to bid on percentages, really. And uh, sometimes you're going to arrive in a good contract. Sometimes it may be slightly odds against. But you just have to work out what will work best in the long run. So oh, East has the option for a, a minimum double here, and because he's 4-4 four, four in the majors, and he's hoping uh, he's going to work wonders with those two tens, then uh, he can just say that he's good enough for a takeout double. If he was uncertain whether he should bid or not, he would bear in mind that uh, Rodwell and Mexroth often open very light, and uh, it's quite possible once they open that the other side will have a game on. Possible even once the other hand has responded, because they may both bid with something like 10 opposite 5, something like that. Again, that one spade is a, a transfer bid, showing values in the minors, probably, or maybe clubs. If he had spades, he would bid one heart, a transfer to spades. I mean, in general um, terms, in this, case, in this case, they pay transfers and one spade on their card, uh, described as a hand, which wants to bid no trump. Three down by south would have shown a hard suit. One diamond was alerted because North South can uh, easily open one diamond on a double ton and even sometimes on a single ton. Right, well, this is uh, absolutely typical of the way that Mexroth and Rodwell bid, getting to games on these values, which they're famous for being able to make. Three clubs looked to me an overbid. I was going to suggest that 
you know, most of the inhabitants of the globe, if they play bridge, would think that was worth a raise to three diamonds, particularly as they open so light. Three clubs a bid in the opponent's suit that surprised me. Then his partner bids diamonds again, and he still doesn't let it go. He bids three no trumps. Well, they're famous for uh, making making these games. Let's see if they can hit. The only excuse uh, for South is that uh, Nos two diamond bid. Two Thomas a real opening, because he could pass with some weekends. Yes, I mean, we can see the opening leader, the jack of spades, would have worked well, but it's absolutely fine to lead low, particularly if, uh, say, East is able to, if East could place West with an honour and win with a 10 and then switch to a club, then it would go fine. I still think that South should bid three diamonds. I mean, that, that invites game, and if partner's got 13, 14 or so, then uh, why, why shouldn't he be able to say, OK, let's have a look at three no trumps? Just to bid it, then you're going to get there when partner's got opened on some 10 count. Uh, you say that uh, he didn't have to bid two diamonds, but I don't know about that, because one spade showed a, a flat hand, and if he's got uh, five or six diamonds, does he not want to show that he's got diamonds when he's only promised one with the opening bid? OK, but then he didn't need to bid three diamonds. Well, three diamonds was a, a sign-off on the face of it, facing three clubs if three clubs wasn't forcing to game. Well, someone's gone wrong, haven't they? Anyway, it's not for us to say, look at that, they've gone two or three off or something, because they are absolutely famous for making so many 22, 23 point games. That's probably the thing they're most famous for and why they're so feared as opponents because they put such a lot of pressure on the defenders by bidding thin game after thin game, pushing all the part score battles to the limit and very exhausting to play against. So now we probably have our first one club opening by North House. If you're going to play in a Grand Slam, you shouldn't play in spades because you have some chance of making 13 tricks, even if West has got jack, nine, jack to four spades. If the spades don't come in, you're, you're dead in seven spades, but you might make four heart tricks. Three spades, four hearts is seven. Four diamonds is 11. The ace-king of clubs makes 13. So this is an example of a hand where you've got an absolute bundle of points. And if you bid a slam in a suit, you're at the mercy of a bad break there, whereas if you bid it in no trumps, you may be able to survive a bad split in the suit that would otherwise have been trumps. Okay, so we can see here that the first swing for Nickel finally happened, uh, 10 in, in board 10. Uh, when uh, South decided to bid 3 spades instead of 4 spades at this table, uh, well, uh, I am into 4 spades personally, but uh, I can understand that vulnerable. Uh, we said 8 uh, 2 2 1, you can decide only 3 spades. Uh, I don't know what you think about it, guys. Well, I'm not going to say what I think about it because I don't, I don't agree with it basically and we're not supposed to criticise players, particularly uh, players at a world level. I'll just say that I wouldn't bid three spades on it. I can barely believe it. But I mean if they play three spades to show an absolute whale of a hand like that then presumably partner's meant to raise on a couple of aces. But that's, uh, yeah, amazing. I have to agree with David. For me it's one space or four spades. And when I have that option, I normally go for four spades just to make uh, life harder for opponents. 
Indeed, I mean, you may have eight tricks to make in a spade contract and one trick or even no tricks in defence. So that absolutely calls for a preempt, and uh, you don't really want to overcall one spade and allow West to make some cheap bid for them to unearth a fit by the time it gets back to you. So it seems absolutely perfect to bid four spades, and uh, if that was given to an expert panel, you'd think that, uh, well, at least nine out of ten would bid four spades on that, and uh, maybe maybe more than that. Three spades looks very eccentric to me. Right, we're being told by Prospero1 that two hearts in their system is equivalent to um, the old 2 no trump bid in Precision Club, which shows a balanced hand of 14 up. In Precision Club, some versions are a positive of 1 no trump would be 8 to 13, and the opener could then bid two clubs stamen. Partner would respond showing any majors or not on 8 to 10, or make a jump response to show 11 to 13. So one club, two no trumps would show 14 up. And here, Mixtroff and Rodwell are using two hearts. So immediately, South knows that they're in the uh, slam range. What's he actually got? He's actually got 17 facing a strong club. Let's see how they go about it. The first duty will be to look for a suit fit, for, perhaps. I can tell you that um, two hearts was the 14 plus balance. Two spades would have been eight plus. And um, Three suited hand with a um, singleton or voice in media. So no would be the same eight plus with a singleton diamond. Yes, those responses Peter mentions cover the old impossible negative part of Precision Club where the responder has a good hand, but it's 4441, so he can't make a positive response in uh, any of his suits. So here, Mextroth is going through um, some sort of fit finding mechanism. He has shown uh, five spades, presumably. Anyway, let's see. Oh, I see. Three spades bar, two no trumps shows five spades and four hearts. Well, we're getting good service from our view, gro view graph operator. Maximo Cruzithio, many thanks to him. Yes, he has done a marvelous job so far to help us and to help all the spectators. Well done by him. You see here that East has doubled four clubs to help his partner to the eventual opening lead rather than him making a some lead that might give a trick away, say in hearts, by saving declare a heart guess. He's suggesting that uh, a club lead looks as if it's safe from his point of view. Queen Jack 9 to 5. So that's a reminder to us that when the opponents are boring a stiff with some auction that takes about 10 minutes and has about 15 bids in it, you mustn't go to sleep because there may be a bid that you can double to suggest a partner a possible opening lead. It looks like on board 11 that. Um Catch Nickel also play Gerber. So now I know four people in the world who play Gerber over an old low trump opening. I'm not sure I can find more than them, but for sure there are four, because the bidding in the closed room was two no, four clubs, four diamonds, seven no. So they found out there was three aces opposite and then bid seven no trumps. Hmm. Well, it's fair enough anyway. They're adding seven tricks into someone who's shown a pretty massive hand. I'm told that four clubs on the two notes I'm opening is almost standard in USA. I will tell that we will find very few European pairs who play that. For myself, I play um, one no four clubs or two no four clubs, showing five five in the majors and invitational for slam. Oh, 
all of the four club partners could be a major if uh, he accepts my invitation, or he could be four diamonds, which says, oh, my majors are very poor, then I can beat four hearts past correct. Well, whatever all these bids mean, I'm going to be very, very disappointed if they end in seven spades anyway. It's obviously right to be in uh, seven no trumps instead with a much better contract, but uh, doesn't necessarily need uh, a good spade break. It's not that you definitely need to make uh, four heart tricks. You might have some possibility of a... Uh, not very likely, but anyway, there's some sort of squeeze chances as well. Yeah, I have some message, uh, some private message coming from me, uh, telling that the surprise that it looks like Spade uh, Fit was not shown yet, but apparently it was already, uh, as uh, I was looking for to explain, apparently Four Club was already showing Spade. So that's why there is no doubt about Four Not Trump uh, being Spade Fit, apparently. But uh, we, we, I mean, we, we don't know, of course. Uh, but we do know, uh, they know what they're doing, <laughs> for sure. Well, once again, uh, the ViewGraph operator is giving us very good service, saying that Four No Trumps was a Roman key card, Blackwood for Spades, and Six Clubs is asking, how many heart honors? How many heart honors North as well? What an amazing depth of system that they can start asking things like that. So they haven't wasted the last 30 years of their partnership. They've developed some system probably with about 250 pages to it, and they never seem to go wrong. And uh, it's helping them, no doubt, to eventually win their way to 7 no trumps, and then we can all burst out in applause. I'm told from a spectator who comes from the closed room that. Um, Two no, four club, four diamond. That's the four diamond bit. I was told that the four diamond bit in the closed room was also uh, misunderstood. Uh, West thought that four clubs were some sort of splinter or cupiding, and he just cubed his diamonds. So uh, I just want to know why uh, when experts like that, uh, the player did uh, apparently a mistake, I would say. They still reach a good contract when I'm doing a mistake on my bidding. I, I'm always playing a bad contract. So I get the difference. Well, that's life, isn't it? Always seems to happen to our opponents and never to ourselves. Anyway, having said that, uh, of course, Rodwell and Maxroth, after I'm told their partnership is 34 years old, Al Hollander tells me. They won a national pair event in spring 1979. Having said that they know what they're doing, Rodwell is spending an inordinate amount of time deciding what to do next on a balanced hand, which would be unusual if he was completely confident. One of uh, our listeners had a very nice comment to the uh, four club bit uh, Sperber. As he said, it's only half popular in the US. Only one of the two partners in both room took it as Sperber. <laughs> very good. The reason why Gerber is uh thought of by sort of experts in rather snooty fashion is because they think that inexperienced pairs choose Gerber because they would misuse Blackwood and get too high, and they tend to use it at the expense of Q bidding, which is really the center of all slam bidding, using, uh, once you've agreed a suit, to use suit bids at a high level to show aces and kings, singletons and voids. So players using Gerber, not, not necessarily as an immediate response to one or two no trumps, but after they've agreed hearts or spade as no trumps. It's probably uh, they don't use cubits, and therefore they would get experts sort of saying, oh dear, Gerber, you know, how terrible. So that's the explanation for it, whether it's fair or not. But how do you like my use of four club, uh, David? Five, five in the majors, and invitation for slam. Well, I mean, it may be fine for an expert partnership, but not for um, 
the sort of um, people who play club bridge because such a hand will come up only once a year and as we've already seen it's been absolutely proved to us here that even at this level they don't even know what four clubs mean so every time you have uh, agreements like that oh well there we go they stopped in seven spades yeah well I mean uh, it, it's fair enough because I mean we know from the, the explanation of the bidding that Mextroth has already determined that North doesn't have King Queen of Hearts so he doesn't think too much of the secondary chances of making seven no trumps when the Queen of Hearts is missing if there should be a bad spade break and in case uh, he needs to do something with his fourth heart and North didn't have a discard on the Jack of Hearts playing in spades might possibly allow him to do something fancy uh, in the club suit maybe establishing uh, a card if by roughing something like that so they spent long enough uh, discovering what each other had and uh, on the basis of the information Mextroth had he decided some spades would be the uh, better shot. I'm quite proud to say I've never made a Gerber bid in my life. Are you a member of the Never Bid Gerber Club, Peter? He's just thinking back, wondering if he ever did when he was about 17. Maybe we'll find out the answer. So players have a lot of different bids available to show the quality of their support here for spades. That east hand well there we go the operators giving us a bit more of his absolutely first-rate service today telling us what three hearts means it shows a mixed raise of spades so that will be four card trump support and not enough to cubit two hearts which might show slightly more in terms of uh, defense and high cards but something which has got fairly good playing strength and fairly good defense a sort of mixture of the two so they use two hearts three hearts two spades three spades all of those would describe the type of spade raise that they have. Two spades would tend to be a weak uh, raise with any three card support and three spades would be a weak raise with four card support. And Lev has a pretty decent hand for a non-vulnerable one spade overcall so facing a mixed raise he knows it's going to be about a ten count over there, nine or ten count with four card support. He's uh, happy to bid four spades for one reason or another. Mind you, he did have to bear in mind that one no trump overcall over him, which suggests that there's going to be a spade loser because Rodwell had shown a spade stopper with his one no trump bid, unless, unless that was a transfer to clubs, which is uh, what they would have played over a takeout double. So it's possible they played transfers over the uh, overcall too. Right, this is the last board of the set, so we really must all thank Maximo, our wonderful Dugraph operator. He's been absolutely faultless in relaying all the bids and the cards not a single undo which is what they have to do if they understandably uh, make a mistake and he's given us such a lot of extra value explaining the bids making extra comments so a loud round of applause to him many thanks also to Sylvain and Peter my fellow commentators and to uh, BBO for allowing us to see these top championships free of charge excellent I've enjoyed it and I'm sure you all have I hope so anyway I can only 100% support you um, about our excellent uh, operator. Um, he's the best operator I have come in with uh, here in these US tiles by miles. Usually that prize goes to Jan Martel, who is an absolute star in that field as well, apart from everything else she does. Yeah, I do know some uh, look surprised when uh, we congratulate uh, our operator, but I, I, I know, uh, I mean, I do it quite sometimes, and it's so difficult to do it, really. Yeah, it needs a lot of, uh, you need to be focused uh, every time. Uh, it's really tough, so yes, I also had a big thanks and congratulations to our operators here. I believe the next session is due to start at 5.25. That's in about half an hour's time. Yes, and when, if we have time before, before it goes down, I have two comments. Board number 13 was passed out, which is a little bit strange. North have a five card diamond and a decent 12 high card point hand, but that's what's happened. Then board 14, for sure there was something wrong in the system for North South. South open one spade, North bit two no trump, South three hearts, North three spade, and South four spades. I think the problem is that over one spade two no trump, you need a bit to show that you have a minimum hand and bits to show 
you have extras. And if south of your extra values, for sure north, with a 17 high cut point, would go for slam. What I can re recommend is that after a major two no, that you use three clubs to show partner, I have a minimum opening. Tells nothing about the hand, just I have a minimum opening. That means that the two no trump bidder, if you only have these 12, 13, 14 points, can jump the four in the major and give no information away to the opponents. And nine out of ten times, when the bidding goes one major, two no trump, you are only going uh, for game. And if you only go into game, why tell opponents a lot about your hand? Well, the only explanation I can see for them stopping in four when seven was such a good contract is that it's hard to believe, but Glubok must have assumed his partner only had a limit bid of three spades. In other words, that two no chance Jacoby was being used on limit bids up, because if North had uh, enough to force to at least game, then I mean the South Hand is a useful 17 count. He wouldn't just bid four spades over three spades, he would at least bid four clubs. So that is a, a, an unbelievable uh, screw up at this level, really. I mean, they're, they're wrong by two whole levels. If they'd stopped in six, they'd have lost a huge swing. They're pretty lucky that, uh, well, they can't really be lucky to lose <laughs> 14 hints, but there you go. But what do you uh, think about my philosophy that you have the three top bit to show minimum? Absolutely essential, yes. All the, all the um, straightforward bidding books say go ahead, show your singleton on the opener's hand. Show the singleton whether you've got 11 points or 18. Well, that's quite ridiculous, isn't it? How can partner judge if you make the same rebid with eight, 18 or 11? So I agree with you entirely. Oh, it's a bad day for the spectators. I think we have agreed in almost all subjects today. That's not normal for, for you and me, David, but also nice. Well, perhaps we were wrong on all the points, but anyway, the Kapitzers can make up their own minds. So, seems that they've finished play here. Well, they will do very shortly. Thanks for watching. See you soon on one of the other sessions. Yes, see you also, David. And one of my favorite spectators just told, oh, you and David are both getting old. So bye bye well. for now. See you in um, about um, half an hour. No, 40 minutes.